Hello everyone, my name is Raven and welcome to Raven67854 Gaming and welcome to my Left 4 Dead 2 SDK tutorial series. In this tutorial, we are going to uh, look at creating our first level where we set up our character and so forth and uh, just building and compiling and running it. Now, before we get started, I just want to say that obviously you will need Left 4 Dead 2 and it, you will need it installed and you will also need the SDK installed, which you can just search for inside of your Steam library. If you own Left 4 Dead 2, it'll appear. Uh, if it's not visible, you can search for it and it should show up. So let's just go ahead and launch the Left 4 Dead 2 authoring tools. And you'll get this lovely little bit here. There's a lot of stuff here. We're not going to cover everything. Uh, this is These two things are direct links to documentation, both of which are extremely useful. Uh, so let's just launch the Hammer World Editor. And we're just going to do a file, new. And now you see we have you know, our map. It's all set up and everything. Uh, one more thing that I want to cover really, really quick is the fact that I'm not going to cover every little, you know, bit of the interface in the first video. Um, we're just going to do it as we go. The next thing I want to say is if you run into any issues, feel free to put a comment in the section below, or you can check the description and there's a link to the discord and I'll do my best to help you. And eventually I hope that there will be a sizable community and we will, uh, eventually all be able to, you know, help each other and grow. So first things first. This viewport is for your 3D viewport, and these are your top right and front views. And we'll take a look at what those do in just a second. Over here, you have your selection tool, your magnify tool, your camera tool, the entity tool, the brush uh, block slash brush tool. I call it a brush tool, but it's actually called the block tool. Um, the This is for changing textures. Uh, we'll see that in a later video. Uh, this is for actually applying a texture if you have one selected. We'll take a look at that again in another video. Uh, this right here is for obviously decals, overlays. Your clipping tool, we'll take a look at that too. And the vertex tool, which will be very useful. Okay, so uh, there's, like I said, there's a whole bunch of different options out there for, you know, a lot of different ways to do stuff. But how you actually like move around in the viewports uh in the 3d viewport you can actually hold uh space and then rotate sorry and then hold down left mouse and you can you know rotate the camera around and then you can use wsad to move around you can't see anything right now because we don't have anything you can also just hit z or z and that will lock and then you don't have to hold down space or even uh, the mouse. It's locked in first person flat cam view. So let's go ahead and actually like build something so we can actually see what that looks like in action. So over here we have our texture group and we can select textures and materials. And as well as we can also pick any texture we would like. There's a lot in here, uh, but we're going to hit browse and then we're going to go to the filter and we're going to type dev and we're going to scroll down until you see these two textures here. Uh, they're the ones that I really like to use in not just tutorials, but in prototyping because, you know, you don't really worry about the look. You just worry about the layout. And I'm going to use the gray for the floor and I'm going to use the orange for the walls. So we're just going to double click that. And then we are going to select the block tool. Actually, I'm going to select the gray first. I'm going to hit browse again, select the gray. We're going to do the uh, floor first. And I think I'll just make it a 512 by 1024 room. And if we were to pan the camera around, we can see the room here, and it is fairly sizable. Uh, in fact, it's also extremely thick. Uh, as you can see down here, we have a snap on a grid, and you can use the left and right brackets to lower the grid view. You can also go, I can't actually remember. Ah, here it is. Ah, get out of there. These two here will also uh, raise and lower the grids. So what we're actually going to do is set the grid size to 16. Uh, actually, you know, let's do 32 so we get like slightly uh, thicker walls. So we'll just select the block tool and then we'll just click and drag somewhere. Then we'll move it here and we'll make it 512 by 768. That should make a decently large uh, starting room. And then we'll just hit enter to apply it. 
And the nice thing about all of this is, is of course, we could just change it. So now we can switch to the selection tool. And the nice thing is, do pay attention to like, you know, the uh, tooltips. The tooltips are extremely useful. So like Shift S brings you to the selection tool and Control B will bring you back to the block tool. So we'll just select this. And what we can do is we can narrow it a little bit if we like. Which is totally fine. Uh, let's see here. I'll bring it down to 256. Like I don't want it like super thick, but I do want it kind of long. Actually, let's just, uh, there we go. 256 by 512. And now what we'll do is we're just gonna make some walls. Now, interesting thing to note about Hammer, and this has been commented many times before in other tutorials, um, you know, like here recently someone commented, why is my wall, uh, you know, I think they had asked, why is their wall the same size as the floor? So two things to note, uh, which viewport you actually draw in matters uh, for like, you know, its position and its height, but also the last block you selected uh, hammer will try to make it to be roughly the same size and shape. So in this case, I want it to be the same length, but I also want it to be, uh, you know, the same, uh, but I want it the height to be different. So I'll just drag this and I'll make it 256. And as you can see, when I did that, it's the same length, even went down to, you know, the very bottom here. Uh, but up here, as you can see, it it's still 512 in length, but the height is 256. And we'll hit enter to apply that. And this is a fairly tall, uh, you know, room, but that's okay. Now, the next thing to note is for optimization purposes, you do want to use as few brushes as possible, um, but don't worry too much while you're making. I mean, if, you know, if you're making something and you can reuse a brush, like, you know, just extend it, that's fine. Um, but that's not always the case of what you want to do. Uh, but you do want to keep, you know, your brush count as small as possible. Um, and when we start talking about portals and other systems for optimizing, we'll get into that into detail. So now what we're going to do is we are just going to do the other wall, the other side. And as you can see, it's now much, much smaller because we, we drew it from the top view. And once again, you can hold space and then left click to pan around in any of these viewports. But that's no big deal. We'll just drag it up and then we'll just hit enter. And now what we will do is now we'll just draw down it here into the front view. And you'll notice that uh, it is the same length, but I'm actually going to drag this over just a smidge. And I'm going to hit enter. And then in the top down view, I'm just going to drag the next one. Whoops. And once again, it's super small because it's from the top down view. And I'll just hit enter. Awesome. So now we have our lovely little room. Doesn't really have anything in it, but that's okay. Now, in Hammer, due to the fact that it is a much more older style engine, everything has to be fully enclosed when it does the BSP uh, bake. Uh, otherwise, you will get some serious looking artifacts there and no one wants that. So I'm gonna select the floor. I'm gonna go back to browse. I'm just gonna double click here to select the texture. And then from the top right here, I'm just gonna drag all the way across and then I am just going to make sure that it's, I don't actually have to do that part. I just like doing it because it's tidy. And there we go. We now have a ceiling. So we're about done um, and we're about able to walk around, but what else do we need? Well, we need a light. So let's select our entity or you can hit shift E to pull up the entity tool. And then over here, you have different types of categories, entities and prefabs. And we want to be in the entity category and under objects, we just want to select light. And this is a point light. There are several different kinds of lights and we'll cover all of this in a specific video. But for right now, we just want to select it kind of in the center. And then in the right view, we just want to drag it up a little bit until we, you know, kind of have it where we think we want it. And I want it about right here. Actually, I want it down one. No, 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 this is fine. Okay, we'll just hit enter. And what you can do is you can actually double click the light in the 3D viewport, or you can right click and then go to properties and you can pull up the light properties. You can affect everything from the brightness scale in HDR. You could change the color, the color brightness. Now, 
in brightness, you'll see that we have four values, 255, 255, 255, and 200. The first three are for your RGB color value. The last value is the light intensity. So if you raise it, the light will be brighter. If you lower it, it will be darker. Uh, and once again, you know, we'll cover all of this, things like max distance and so forth in later videos. But for right now, let's just get this ball rolling. So we're going to leave it. Actually, I'm going to raise it up to about 250. And then I'm just going to hit apply. Because, you know, this room's a little big, so I do want it to be a little bright. It might actually be too bright, but we'll adjust. That's that's the that's the key thing. Not everything's going to be perfect the first time you do it. So never be afraid to experiment and try. Now, the next thing you need is you need an info underscore survivor position. And this is going to determine, and when you kind of want this to be now, this next part is very important. You don't want this thing clipping through the ground because it might actually push the AI, you know, deep down into the ground, which is one reason why, you know, we made this floor so tall. Uh, I'm actually going to lower it. And having it level is fine, but if you run into any issues, feel free to set the snap grid to one and then just nudge it up a pixel, and that usually fixes it. Now, the other thing we need and we should be able to find it if we just search for player, is we want info player start. Now, effectively what this does is this tells, say, you know, hey, you know, we want the player, like you, the person playing, to start here. Uh, if you don't have this, it will try to start it somewhere else. Uh, this is just necessary just for this. Um, and you can put it anywhere you like. Now, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to save. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a new folder, and I'm just going to call this uh youtube series and inside of here i'm gonna call this yt underscore uh, lvl1 okay and now what we want to do let's just run this map so you can either hit f9 as you see here or you can go up to run map and these are all your different options so you can run the dsp normal uh sorry bsp not dsp bsp uh so this like builds like the levels um and uh, just the the brushes and compiles everything. This tool runs for like uh, collision and like what you can see. And the rad tool is your lighting. And you can also tell it to don't run the game after compiling. Like you just want to run it and wait for key press when done compiling allows you to. Uh, so it'll open up a console window that'll just allow you to keep the console. And you already have the additional game parameters, but I'm going to put them in the description just on the off chance they are not there. Uh, so you'll be able to just copy paste and you can go into expert mode and you can change all sorts of this stuff. Uh, you know, like all kinds of different options here. And I'm just going to go back to normal because the default for all this stuff is perfectly fine. And HDR, of course, you know, bakes in HDR lighting. So we're just going to run this as a complete default and it should go fairly quickly just due to the fact that, you know, there's not really a whole lot here or even going on. And it's going to give us a warning when we sign in because we or when it loads in because we don't have nav meshes yet and that's a way later down tutorial. I want to get the mapping done first and then we'll go through and then we'll add in the nav meshes. Uh, or you can do it manually and do it as you go, but it's entirely up to you, but I'm just going to do it once. So you'll see here that what's happening here is um I'm going to turn on no clip here. So kind of what's happening here is the player fell through the floor. And this is exactly what I was talking about that can happen. So let's fix this. I'm going to hit the tilde key to pull up the console. And I'm going to type exit because that'll just close the game. Now, once again, very annoying. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to bring the snap grid down to one. And I'm just going to bump these guys up just a smidge. Just so they're, you know, above the floor. Don't worry, they'll fall down to the ground. I'm going to set it back to 32. So that's what our snap grid is set to. And then about the snap grid, it's very important that you keep that consistent. Uh, you know, at least, uh, especially for like a lot of like, you know, like the whole of the level. Uh, because like, you know, you don't want to be working in four in one area and then 16 in another area. Because then you can end up with like really weird scale differences and it can look really odd. 
And usually it's good to just have some level of consistency. If you want to work at 16, that's totally cool. We're going to be working at 16. Okay, here you go. So everything is fine now. And yeah, they're just kind of standing around. They're staring at the wall. The wall is very interesting. And I actually think the lighting for this room is perfect. Like this is exactly what we wanted. Um, so yes, this is very, very good. And on the whole, I'm, I'm, I'm quite pleased. 250 was perfect for this room size. Okay, so thank you everyone for watching. Uh, I will see you in the next one. In the next one, we're going to look at adding static props and weapons, ammo, all that sort of stuff into the scene. And, you know, we'll go from there and just keep building our level one little bit at a time. So if you have any questions, comments, whatever, uh, don't forget, you can check the description and you can go to the Discord or you can just, you know, post in the YouTube comments and I'll try to help as best I can. Discord's a little easier because you can send images and stuff, but I understand if you don't use Discord or don't want to join another Discord channel. Uh, as well, if you would like to support the channel and get early access to all these uh, Left 4 Dead videos, um, or all of my videos, really, uh, you can get early access. All members get early access a day or two early. Uh, so sometimes even a couple days early. So feel free to become a member starts at $5 a month and, you know, just a little, uh, little shout out to that. And I will see you guys in the next one and look forward to the next video being July. Well, from this time, it'll be July 2nd at 4 PM. I will see you all in the next one.